the passport strategy, what is it and how can you use it to create pro property consultancy? That's what we're talk going to talk about in this video. So what is it? Well, it's really an advanced version of the location strategy. If you've not seen that video on, on the location strategy, go and watch that next. Now, I first got interested in this strategy back in the early 2000s. I don't know if you remember, but at the time there was a TV series running called I'll Be the Same Pet. And this TV series was about a group of builders that traveled around the world doing various construction projects. So when I watched this, I thought, how brilliant would it be if you could travel around the world and actually get paid for it? At the time, we already had contracts all over the place anyway. So I didn't think it was too di that too much different, whether you were traveling two hours by road or getting on a plane for two hours instead. But around the same time, I also heard about one of our competitors who'd got staff based out in Mauritius. And I thought, if they can do it, then why can't we? So the idea developed from there. And we, we had an interest in the Middle East, particularly Dubai. And I can't remember how it happened, but we got asked to tender for a project in Abu Dhabi. It, it was part of a new seafront development there. Now, as it turned out, we, with, we ended up withdrawing from that tender process because we didn't really understand the market well enough. And we were probably a, a bit too early for that because we didn't know about things like local employment law or even how to set up a business over there. But so I think that's probably a lesson of using this strategy. You should probably focus on one area of the world and then learn about the business culture there and really build, build up your understanding and surround yourself with the right people so that when an opportunity comes up, you're ready to go. With us at that time, although we had an interest in the projects in Dubai, we weren't laser focused on just that area. We were looking at going anywhere. And we were, we were also going through the process of buying a company in Florida. But late, later after that, we learned from that lesson. And I, I've since been involved with companies in, in Europe and later taking companies from the UK over to China. So how can you use Passport Strategy to grow your business? So the first thing to think about is which countries would, would have demand for what you offer. And you might need to package it up in a slightly different way. Sometimes when, you, when you're looking at different countries, you'll normally see three signs that tell you whether it's suitable for your business to go there or not. They'll either have nobody doing what you do, they'll have a small number of businesses doing what you do, or there'll be lots of businesses doing what you do. So if there's nobody doing it, then there's probably not a demand for it. Because although we tend to think our ideas are, are original, if the fundamentals of what you provide whether it's cleaning services or providing entertainment, if there's enough demand for it, then someone will create a business to fill that demand. One mistake that people make when they use this strategy is, is they believe that if nobody's doing it, then they can come in and own the whole market. The problem is, if it's a, a radically new solution you're providing to the, the and that means you've got to educate the local people on why they should buy what you're offering. Whereas when there's already demand for it, someone else has already done that upfront work. The second thing is when there's a small number of businesses doing what you do, perhaps it's, it's an early stage of people adopting it. I think this is the best time to enter that market because you've already gone through that process, learning the best way to, to develop the market uh, in, in the UK or wherever you're from. So taking that experience from where you're from over to a new location means that with the right resources, you'll be able to dominate the local market. <clears throat> then the third sign is when the market is saturated and there's lots of businesses doing what you do. Now, if your strategy is to grow a business from scratch and grow it org organically in this new country, then you'll really struggle to do that with so much competition. Another option in a saturated market, you could look at acquiring a number of existing businesses to give you that local presence and then grow from there. But let's talk for a second about when would be the right time for you, for you to use a passport strategy. The first thing that absolutely needs to happen is you must already be a major player in your local market. And when I say that, I mean, you know how to grow your business. You've got it figured out. You've tried all the various strategies and you know what works best. The next is your existing business needs to be running by itself without you needing to be involved. 
And third, you must have people dedicated solely to making this new country successful. If you're expecting those staff to continue with projects here in your own country, but also drive projects in other countries too, then it's going to fail and it'll probably damage your existing business too. It's expensive to go to new countries and new markets. It's starting everything from scratch. You have no customers, no supply chain, no relationships, no staff, and you have no experience of the business culture in that country. So all of these things have to be learned and developed and mistakes come with a price tag. A new overseas market needs to be structured properly as well. It should be a separate legal entity to your existing business. The last thing you want is to have some liability issue in the new location and it end up draining your existing business. So when you've chosen a country that you, you think will have demand, the next step is to immerse yourself and learn about the local culture. One of the best ways to do that is to spend some time there. But while you're there, rather than spending all the time by the pool, instead spend time meeting with local people and potential business partners and advisors that, that they can help you when you set it up. <coughs> Finding a good local lawyer and accountant, as well as other advisors that can help the new business to succeed. And then you'll probably want to find some find local experienced people that could run your business in the new country. The important thing with doing this is they'll already have experience in that culture. They'll already know potential clients, suppliers and staff that can give the business a kickstart in the new location. It should be your job just to oversee operations across both countries, but not actually get involved in either. And that's how you use a passport strategy to grow your property consultancy.